Hey everybody, my name's Chris and welcome to the Coffee Fuel Woodsman channel. This is Tilly. She says hi. And to, we're just in our backyard today and we're going to show you my seven favorite ways to make coffee. Now I'll uh, separate these out and we'll do one by one. I'm going to end up making a lot of coffee so I've got a fire pit going over behind me here. Uh, some of them I'll, I'll do on the fire and others I'll just use alcohol stove or the jet boil fuel to brew up the water for that. So I'm going to go over size and weight and uh, ease of cleanup is a, is a big thing for me when I take stuff in the woods. And uh, I'll save my favorite which is going to be the pour over for last and I'll show you how that kit's assembled. But let's get started. I think I'm going to go with the percolator to start. So here is my nine cup percolator and that goes inside it. it there's your Nalgene bottle for a size comparison and it weighs 797 grams with that inside it. I filled it up with about five cups of water and I'm going to take it over and pop it on the stove now. Okay, so that percolated for about uh, 10 minutes and it's ready to go. I only put five cups in just because I'm going to have so much coffee by the end of the day. There's no way Claire, my wife or I will ever be able to drink it. This might actually be my favorite way to brew coffee when I'm out. You get the most amount of coffee. It tastes, in my opinion, as good as anything else that you can make out in the woods. And it's, it's easy. Like you just start it going and you leave it. All you got to do is make sure it doesn't boil too much. Okay, now next on the list is the Maka Pot, M-O-K-A. Um, this thing claims to be uh, basically an espresso maker and holds, they say, six cups of coffee. Well, it's six if you lengthen it for American standards in terms of, you know, Americanos. Uh, it's heavy. It weighs 603 grams. This is the basket you fill with coffee. And uh, you have to fill this reservoir first with water. Quite a bit heavier than even the nine cup maker. And the issue, it also takes up a lot of room in the pack. And you could stuff quite a bit of coffee down in here, probably enough for a whole trip, maybe. But it's, it's more of a luxury coffee maker for me. I do like that it has a different flavor. He'd be very easy to do on my little alcohol stove, but I think I, where I've got the fire pit going, I'm just gonna take them over there. The handles get hot when you're putting them over in open flame, so you definitely need a glove to go with them. So that would be about as much coffee as you would pour. So I'd dump that into my cup, and then fill the rest up with hot water. As it is, it's more like an espresso. Mm. Okay, next up is the jet boil. And this is what I started out using and it has a French press attachment in the bottom. Uh, the size, that's how much pack space it'll take up. However, with a jet boil, you need to have a canister of fuel as well. I only have the big ones re remaining. I don't have any of the small ones. A small one will fit right inside and then you can take everything as a single unit. So this weighs 419 grams. That one weighs three, sorry, I weighed them before, 379 for a total of 798 grams for those without water. So it, it's a little heavy. However, you don't need to tarry, carry that. And you actually wouldn't even need to take a full one. I mean, even the smaller ones would get you quite a few boil ups, depending on what you're doing. Now it comes with this pot stand that you put on. You don't need to carry that with you. I always do, you never know. But it's a lot of moving parts. The other thing I'm not a huge fan of with jet boils is how loud they burn but they do boil water quickly, which is nice. So that will sit in top like that. All we need to do is boil our water. Mm. 
I'm not sure if that comes across, but it's fairly loud. That may not be an issue for you. It's not really that big of a deal. So we'll turn that off. And where I had two cups of water, two scoops of coffee in. So it's basically this metal rod. I'm gonna use it as a stir stick. And then we have to go through the top of the lid. And the French press, if you tighten this too tight, once it overheats in the hot water, it's really hard to get apart. Now we're just gonna set a timer and leave that for four minutes. If you want it a little stronger, you can leave it in longer. And just press down till it compresses all the way. There, it's your French press coffee. Thicker and cloudier than some. Still good. Okay, next on the list, cowboy coffee. So all you need for that is a cup to boil water in. This is my larger pot. I take this when uh, weight isn't as much of an issue for me and I wanna be able to brew up, say, meals and coffee at the same time. Uh, it actually has come with me quite a bit lately. Uh, it's my first one, it's a bit heavier, it's a steel pot. I didn't weigh this one, but you know, it's a, it's a simple way of doing it. So, I've got two cups of water in here. I'm gonna add just two scoops of coffee. Now, I could boil this with my jet boil or with my alcohol stove, but for the sake of time and the fact I've got a fire pit right there, I'm just gonna put it on there. And you just let it boil however strong you want it. Five, 10 minutes, maybe. What you can do with cowboy coffee, because all the grinds are obviously in that pot, to settle them, you can put a little cold water on top. And that, they say, will settle the coffee grinds. You can either do it in the pot or in the glass. I'm not really sure which is better. I personally haven't really had too much trouble with it. Or brown as mud. There it is. Maybe we'll dump a little bit more water in, see if we can settle it. Now that's probably, I put too many grinds in for the amount of coffee I had. Now I don't do cowboy coffee very often. The only time I do it is if I've forgotten my filter basket. Oh, tastes good. Tastes great. Now, the next two things require that I have boiling water. That's a AeroPress. At 178 grams, let's bring my fancy feast stove back and boil up enough to do both items that I'm going to make. Now, with the AeroPress, we're going to put in two cups of coffee. So I need two scoops of coffee. Now, this filter does have to be wet, slightly dampen it. Simply fill it to the number that you want. I said two, but I think that's going to be a three easily. You put your cover on and set your timer. It's the same as a French press, pretty much. I think you want four minutes or so. The other deal with the, the uh, AeroPress, you have to bring something to plunger this coffee into. So you do need a cup. You could use, I could use my wood cup. Um, this might be too much volume for this cup. It's hard to say. I find with an AeroPress, it doesn't make a ton of coffee. Um, theory is the pressure of the air pushing the coffee through the filter gives you kind of a, uh, a better extraction from the coffee bean. I do like it. I find that, you know, the size of it. Finished. There, and once you hear air come through, you stop. I find the size, you can't really pack your coffee in it. You kind of could maybe in through this part of the tube. Um, and the fact that it makes fairly small amounts of coffee. For me, it's just not quite sufficient, but it is a good option to have, and it does taste a little different. So let's have a look at what it looks like. So again, it's, it's a clearer coffee, similar to the pour over. 
Mm. Oh, that's quite good. The easiest and lightest version of all coffees that you can take in the woods, basically the instant coffee. This is a Starbucks Via uh, Columbia version. And all you're gonna need is, or all I need, is the pot, some water, a stove, and obviously I need a windscreen. So these things only weigh about five grams, the whole package. And I'll make about a cup and a half to two cups of coffee. So that water is just about to boil. So I'm gonna add the instant coffee to the cup. Now, I would normally put it in my wooden cup or in that thermos that I have that uh, you'll see in the video. However, it seems to make sense to put it in this. What's there to say? It's instant coffee. Pour and let it sit. Now that's probably really strong because that's not a very big cup. However, it does look really good. So I find with instant coffee like this, you will get a little bit of silt in the very bottom. And you could stir that if you want. Uh, I don't think I'll bother. I think it's my least favorite of all the coffees that I make in the woods. But it's the easiest, um, and it's the lightest, smallest, all that. So it does have its place. Okay, so we're down to my last and my very favorite method. This is the one that I will take with me pretty much every time I go, if I'm doing day hikes or if I'm doing a, a hiking trip where weight and size matters. But I also don't want to skimp on coffee. I want to have a lot of it. Um, and it basically is my travel stuff as well as a pour over basket. So I'm going to do a, a breakdown of what's in this kit. The stuff that I have in here weighs in at, so 271 for that, 143 grams for this Snow Peak uh, filter. And also the thing I, I never, never weighed as well is the filters that go in this filter basket. So a couple of uh, cons first about this is the filters for this Snow Peak style basket are supposed to be a true cone that comes to a point. Everything you buy in the grocery stores here typically is a squared bottom edge. So if you don't fold it over, the grinds can sometimes break through the bottom of the filter. So all it is is folding it into more of a point to add some strength at the bottom. So basically what's in the pot, this is a Tox titanium pot lid little uh, carry case. This is a handmade windscreen. I did weigh that. That's included in the overall weight. Just a lasagna tin. This is a GSI, I forget the name of the actual mug. Uh, there's my little coffee pouch that lives in there. That's about five scoops of coffee. There's my travel ferro rod. And there's my little cat food can that my friend Johnny made for me, which is similar to the Zelf Stove Fancy Feast. Now, I did not weigh the fuel for this, so that would be a little bit extra weight. It takes methyl hydrate. I fill this cup up. I'm only gonna do about half today. And then I use that to fill that. Now you can't really see that, but that is going. The wind is coming from about the direction of the camera, so do that. And now it's just a matter of boiling the water. That's gonna be one large scoop for that. Ah, let's put a little extra. One and a half. I'm not sure how much comes out of the microphone, but uh, compared to the jet boil, this thing is almost silent. All you can hear is really the boiling water, maybe a little sizzle here and there. So that I was gonna test the heat of the handle. If you don't have this windscreen on there right, the heat will come up and superheat that. But well, that's not too bad. 
Now you just let it drain down into the cup. Uh, so another benefit of using this system is that this cup acts as a thermos. I like to drink my coffee out of my, my wooden cup. So this will keep it hotter longer. And if I fill it straight to the top, I'll get about two and a half cups out of this poured in to there. So that's a clearer, cleaner coffee than a lot of the other stuff. Mm. Okay, so there we have the seven ways that I do coffee in the woods. Uh, there's a couple other ways that I didn't show, um, but I don't have the gear. I bought it from Johnny or whatever, so I'm not really going to talk about that. But now the, one of the most important parts that I find is cleanup. And with uh, these things are all very different. I'll start with the, what do we start with? The percolator. So it gets quite dirty. I find you need a lake or something to, uh, to clean up the grinds from that. So you need to dump them out. You definitely need to wash out that basket. So it's good to have running water. Requires quite a lot of water. And then clean out the pot itself. So it's a little bit of work, but it's not too bad if you're on a lake. Okay, the second is the maca pot. So you have to let this thing completely cool down before you can take it apart, unless you're wearing gloves, and even then. You have to clean that bottom filter. You have to take the grinds out, dump those. So you're going to need something to wash that out with. And then the bottom is it will be pretty, uh, pretty clean. The top is usually just needs a quick rinse. So the French press. This is why I stopped carrying a French press. Because now you have to clean all of those items. You dump your coffee out wherever you do. I, I know some people will save the grounds and pack them out with them. If that's you, that's great. Uh, I usually dump them in a fire because I almost always have a fire but then you have to rinse that pot out. You can't store anything back in there without rinsing that out. So I found that's one of the main reasons that and the coffee always had silt at the bottom of it. Cowboy coffee. Again, it's very similar to the French press. That pot gets very dirty. So you dump your water out and then you need to wash it out and I would even take a rag or something to wipe the grinds out before you store that back in your pack. Uh, the Starbucks, well, I don't really have a demonstration for that, but you have to throw that away. So pack that back out. It's really no issue whatsoever. The AeroPress, which is right here. That, you have to undo your lid, throw away this filter. I like to burn them, whatever you choose. But then you have to put away the coffee grinds. Hey, pup. So again, you have to then rinse this out. It's actually not too bad, but you do have to rinse it and clean it before you can, or you can go home. And finally, this, again, the reason why I prefer this method the most of anything. The pour over requires you basically take that, I throw it in a fire pit, you can pack it out, whatever you choose. You can give that a little rinse. It doesn't actually need to be. I don't use creamer or sugar in any of my coffee, so you can dump the coffee out of this and be done, basically. So that's why the pour over for me is the best. I like the flavor the best, and the cleanup is, in my opinion, about the easiest. Okay, well those are seven of my favorite ways of making coffee in the woods. My favorite being the, uh, the pour over, of course. And uh, my second favorite being the nine cup percolator, just because it gives me a lot of coffee. Well, I hope to be back soon with a late season paddle trip somewhere here in Nova Scotia. Uh, but until then, I hope this uh, video was helpful to you and you get out there and enjoy some coffee in the woods.